Okay guys, so we will be discussing working capital management as our topic for today. So um, please um, watch this video para po dun sa mga topics natin in management accounting. Okay, so what is working capital management? As you have learned the definition of working capital management previously, it means current assets minus current liabilities. But now, we will define working capital into two, either gross working capital or net working capital. When we say gross working capital, it means current assets alone. So, may book na nagsasabing pagsasabing gross working capital, your answer should be about current assets. While when we say net working capital, dun palang papasok yung formula nating current assets minus current liabilities. So, let us define first ano ba ang mga current assets. Basically, there are five current assets. And what are these? You all know, know this one. So, we have number one, your cash and cash equivalents, the most uh, liquid among all current assets. Number two, we have your trade and other receivables. Number three, we have your short-term investments, which is now known as your financial asset, uh, recorded through fair value, profit, or loss. Your inventories, if you are a merchandising or manufacturing company. And your prepayments, okay? Or yung mga prepaid expenses mo. Now, on the other hand, when we say current liabilities, it is composed of only two. Namely, the trade and other payables and your accruals. So, babagsak lahat sa accruals mo yung pong ating um, dividends, rentals, um, interest. So, those that are not uh, related with your normal operations na payables, like dividend payables, are all part of your accruals, of course. Okay? So, what are the types of current assets? So, we can classify them into two. First is we have permanent current assets or also known as fixed current assets. These are maintained and are vital for the firm to carry its business regardless of the operation level. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? Ibig sabihin, yan po yung dapat mong i-maintain, yung parang minimum level na meron ka na current assets para makapag-move on ka sa operations ng business mo. So, kumbaga sa pera, yan yung um, nasa pitaka mo na hindi pwedeng mawala, kundi wala ka ng peace of mind. Okay? The minimum level. Okay? That's the permanent current assets. And the second one is we have your temporary current assets, also known as your fluctuating current assets. So, what are these naman? These are the over and above the permanent working capital required to meet seasonal needs. So, as you can see, in a business, may mga period na peak seasons mo, no? yung madaming bumibili sa'yo, may mga iba naman na low seasons mo. So, in order for you to meet the demand of the time, you need to produce more. And in order for you to produce more, you need additional assets. And these assets that you need in order to meet these peak seasons are called your temporary current assets. Parang kapag meron ka lang baon, di ba, na sa school, minsan hindi mo naman uh, need lahat yon, Okay? So, meron ka lang... Uh, needs in order to survive for that day, your minimum amount to survive, that's your permanent current assets. And yung tinatawag naman natin fluctuating dun is yung kapag kunyari nagmimil ka, okay, or meron kang pupuntahan, gagala ka, okay, so yung yung gagamitin mo, temporary current assets. So, anong itsura ba niyan? Ayan po ang itsura niyan. Yung po, temporary working capital, yun yung nasa taas, ito. Yung parang wave, okay, while your permanent working capital, yun yung through time, pataas po siya. Okay? Clear tayo doon? Okay, next. So, usapang utang naman tayo. So, remember, sa utang, we have two kinds of borrowings. Okay? We have uh, short-term borrowings, which is uh, one year or less. And we have the long-term borrowings, or um, one year or more. Okay? And as you can see, yung current assets mo, pwedeng manggaling sa pautang na short term or pautang na long term. Okay? But remember, you need to bear in mind that the interest rate, kapag nangutang ka, ay kailangan mong bayaran. At it, it increases as the period increases. Kaya kung titignan mo, yung long term, yes, matagal mo siya babayaran, so hindi ka parang magagahol sa oras. Yun nga lang, mas mataas yung rate niya. So, mas mataas yung payments na gagawin mo. In order to compensate for the time, 
being na parang um, binayaran mo yung panahon na hindi ka magbabayad ng mabilis. Okay? Kaya mas mataas yung rate niya. So, remember that kapag nangungutang ka. Now, bakit pinag-usapan natin tong utang na to at yung current assets? Because again, these are part of your what? Of your computation of working capital. And we need to know the policy that is involved in the computation of your working capital. And what are these... Um, working capital policy. First on the list is we have your conservative working capital policy. Pag sinabing conservative working capital policy, as you can see, okay, in the um, graph, yung temporary mo is yung nag-wave. Yan. Okay? That is your temporary. While your permanent, itong diretsong line lang yan, pero pataas. Okay? So, kapag conservative ka, di ba takot ka na hindi mo mabayaran yung utang mo, both your temporary and your permanent current assets ay finance ng long-term borrowings mo. Okay? So, lahat ng yan nagagaling sa long-term borrowings. Kasi takot ka na hindi mo mamit yung terms ng uh, utang. So, ganun yung mangyayari. That is conservative. Next is we have yung kabalik ta niya, which is, as you all know, aggressive. Okay? Pag aggressive ka, yan, then you take the risk. You're a risk taker. So, ano mangyayari? Yung temporary mo, at kalahati ng permanent mo ay finifinance ng short-term borrowings. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, alam mo naman na need mo yung permanent current assets mo, right? When it comes to your business, in any season, mapalow or mapa pick season, kailangan mo yan. So, anong gagawin mo? You need them, okay? And you finance all of this, okay? By short-term financing. Okay? Klara tayo doon, that's for aggressive. And the third one is we have your matching. So, from the word matching, okay? So, yung temporary current assets mo, sino dapat ang mag-finance yan? Dahil temporary lang yan to meet the current demand, so dapat ang nag-finance lang yan, short-term borrowings, okay? On the other hand, pag sinabing permanent current assets, dahil matagal-tagal mong gagamitin yan throughout your normal operating cycle, so ang mag-finance yan is what? Long-term borrowing. So, minamatch mo yung short-term borrowings kay temporary, while yung permanent mo, minamatch ni long-term borrowings. Okay? So, as you can see, dun sa tatlong working capital policies, ang ideal na kukunin or gagamitin ng isang kumpanya is this, your matching policy. No? Bibihira lang naman yung mga aggressive businesses at yung mga super conservative. No? But then again, hindi lahat ng kumpanya ina-employ ang matching. Okay? Why? Kasi po, ang hirap tansyahin nung temporary current assets na need mo for the business. Okay? Yes, um, sound ang principle, but then again, because of the size and nature of your business, hindi mo yan matatansya agad-agad. Okay? And remember, you are basing all of your information from your historical figures. So, and, hindi natin alam anong mangyayari in the future, right? Just like what happened now, this year 2020, hindi naman natin alam na magkakaroon na ng pandemic, no? Na-declare pa lang kanina ng WHO na pandemic na yung COVID-19. Okay? And the stock market is down as of now. Uh, for today, I think it's 9.7% na down yung stock market. Kaya, kung tinan mo, nakakaiyak ang nangyayari ngayon, lalo na kung naka-invest ka. Kung hindi ka pa naka-invest, eh, magandang time to para mag-invest sa stock market. Para kapag tumaas, eh, nakakasabay ka sa pagtaas ng market. Okay, so clear tayo doon mga kaibigan. So, we have three working capital policy, aggressive, conservative, and matching. Okay? Now, let us uh, compare the two uh, working capital policy na conservative and aggressive, we did not include uh, matching kasi nasa middle ground siya. No? So, tingnan natin yung end-to-end -end ng, uh, kumbaga, yung exact opposite which is conservative and aggressive. As so level of current assets, mas mataas ang minimaintain na current assets ng conservative as compared sa aggressive kasi nga, takot nga sila na maubusan ng pera. Okay? While, Reliance on long-term financing, yung umaasa sa pautang na mahaba, syempre, conservative pa din kasi nga, takot sila na baka hindi nila mamit. Okay? May liquidity risk yung tawag doon. Okay? So, ang liquidity risk pagdating sa conservative is low. Okay? So, bibihira lang silang hindi makabayad on time. And as to profitability and returns, mas mataas si aggressive kay conservative. Kasi nga, remember, the higher the risk, the higher the return. And remember, pag aggressive ang working capital mo, mas mataas ang possible returns. 
Again, I emphasize possible returns because it doesn't mean na matas ang risk e eh matas po ang iyong returns. There's no guarantee when it comes to businesses. Okay? So that is your comparison of conservative and aggressive. Now, let us discuss operating and cash conversion cycles. What are these two? Okay? So, palagi natin dinedefined ang ang receivables. Okay? Na it should be classified as current if it is collectible within the normal operating cycle. Diba? Kapag trade receivables yan. So, what is basically the meaning of operating cycle? So, dito sa left side ng ating pong, uh, presentation, it is the time that you will acquire the inventory until the time that you will collect the account receivable. So, yan yung cycle ng um, operating mo or normal operating. Okay? So, what is the formula? The formula would be uh, inventory conversion period plus receivable collection period. Now, the next one is the cash conversion cycle. So, dito, same siya ng normal operating cycle but then again, you will consider that all of the inventories that you acquire came from your suppliers, okay, and through pautang, okay, borrowings. So, dito, ang ikot niya, apat. You will acquire the inventory, you will sell them, then you will collect the receivables, and then you will pay your suppliers. Okay? So, the formula for cash conversion cycle is Inventory conversion period plus receivable collection period less payment deferral period. Okay? So, ang rule natin, okay, when it comes to cash conversion cycle, the shorter, the better. Kasi mas mabilis kang nakakakolekta. Okay? Nagagamit mo yung pera mo sa iyong uh, operations. Ne? At remember, ang, ang cash conversion cycle pwedeng maging negative while your operating cycle cannot be negative. Why? Kasi hindi naman natin uh, dinededuct dito ang payment deferral. Pero dito, may deduction portion tayo. Dito, addition lahat. Okay? So, that is your operating and cash conversion cycle compared side to side. So, I hope you learned from this video on our topic on general working capital management. And for tomorrow, or I guess Saturday, I will post naman our discussion on cash management. So, um, wala muna po yung quiz this uh, week, na? No? Pero again, you need to um, use this time in order for you to learn more, no? Huwag magdiwang. Dapat uh, secured po kayo. You pray na sana malagpasan na natin itong uh, pandemic na to, no? At uh, maging regular na lahat kasi all are, are affected. Not only health, not only the travel industry, but also our economy. So, yun. At wag na wag po kayong mag hoard Okay? Huwag kayong mag hoard ng alcohol. Okay? So, mas maganda safeguard. Maligo kayo para maalis yung virus sa katawan nyo. 99.9% of germs will be removed. Okay? So, good day guys!